Here at ACC 2015 in beautiful San Diego, California, we have without a doubt one of the top papers from this meeting. It's the Odyssey trial, and so I wanted to talk to Jennifer G. Robinson, who is an MD, MPH, Professor of Epidemiology at the College of Public Health and Professor of Internal Medicine at the University of Iowa. Go Hawks! Now, if we could for a moment talk about just overall what went on in Odyssey and what did you learn? Okay, so this is the Odyssey long-term trial of the alirocumab, one of these new PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies. This was the largest and the longest trial, uh, really designed to look at safety as well as efficacy, over 78 weeks of therapy. So what we published was that uh, in a very high-risk group of patients, about 20% of people with familial hypercholesterolemia, we took LDL from 122 on maximal statin and lipid-lowering therapy down to about 50. So a 60% reduction in LDL, adding alirocumab to background statin therapy. It seemed to be quite well tolerated overall. Um, in this study, there were a little bit of a few excess uh, events numerically, but not statistically significant in neurocognitive and, and things like that. A little bit, of, you know, there was a significant difference in injection site reactions, as you'd expect for, right. you know, an injectable, but still uncommon, about 5%. Um, but kind of the surprising thing, and what we actually reported actually a way back at ESC in this last summer, was a very surprising early reduction in cardiovascular events within, you know, over the 78 weeks of the trial, about a 50% reduction in heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular death, and unstable angina. So, I mean, some of that was seen early with, with statins, too, that some of the benefit was pretty early, but this is... Early. Really early. Yeah, and this is on top of background statin therapy. And while, you know, yeah, yeah you know, and, and that's really important because, it, you know, it's not definitive by any means because it's, you know, it's like 50 to 60 people, I mean, right. it, who had events. But we've had such a, a long list of failures of things added to background statin therapy that didn't reduce cardiovascular events or actually were harmful. So we're excited that this is going to be a promising LDL lowering drug that reduces cardiovascular events in our armamentarium. And it reduces LDL a lot, which is very exciting. Before we talk about guidelines, which I do want to get to, there were a couple of other papers here that were right. of interest. Simultaneous with our Odyssey long-term paper was another paper on another PCSK9 inhibitor called Evolocumab. Uh, and it was a similar idea. They took all the people from their shorter term you know, studies and rolled them into a long-term extension. So these people had been followed for about a year. Uh, it was a bigger, bigger, about 5,000 people. Evolocumab versus placebo on top of background statin therapy for most people, not everyone. They saw the identical thing. You could almost superimpose those Kaplan-Meier curves on top of each other, a 50% reduction right away uh, in those cardiovascular events. So, I mean, we're, we're excited to see the Odyssey long-term going, wow, but then to see it duplicated. I think that's really important that we're on the right track with this class of drugs. In Odyssey, what was the duration between therapies? Uh, so the dose is 150 every two weeks for alirocumab. In the evolocumab, it was 140 every two weeks. So in about a six, another 60% reduction. So you know, fairly equivalent in LDL lowering efficacy at the two doses. And patients didn't mind. Well, you know, they don't. I mean. It's, we were surprised that they didn't mind, really. It, it's an it's a auto-injector pen. I'm not going to grab my fat and show you how they do it. <laughs> but, you know, it's pretty straightforward how to do it. Um, of course, you have to understand who's in these trials. It's people who signed up for a trial of an injectable drug. Right. Many had familial hypercholesterolemia. You know, when you've got lots of relatives dropping dead in their 30s and 40s, you're highly motivated to treat your cholesterols. But, but it's it's really been remarkable how well accepted it's been. And I and sort of my my idea about it is people. I mean, it's really high tech. You know, it's these monoclonal antibodies. I mean, I think people think it's. Kind of, kind of an exciting way to treat cholesterol, which is interesting. You know, there was the TNT trial, the treating to target uh, trial, and we have kind of a treating to no target world now in right. terms of guidelines. You're talking about my guidelines. I was a vice chair for the 2013 ACCHA guidelines. So what does this mean when we have data like this and a world it where means, targets become it less means, important? Yes. It, it, 
we were exactly on track with the with what we said in the guidelines. You know, what we did is actually we're charged at looking at randomized trials and coming up with a set of guidelines, sort of de novo. And when we looked at the clinical trials, almost all of which were statin trials, in a broad range of people, we found overwhelming evidence that statins reduce cardiovascular events and death. Um, you know, they reduce it in direct proportion to how much you lower LDL. Nobody titrated to goal. So we actually couldn't figure out what the right goal might be from this data. And right. actually, as they kept doing the trials, you know, they started with the really high cholesterol and then kept whittling down so that people, by the end, had cholesterols of, you know, 70 coming into the trials. And they still benefited. So we were kind of left with, well, we don't want, we want to get rid of goals because we don't know what they are, but we also want to get rid of them because we don't want to avoid, we don't want to get, we want to get rid of treatment thresholds because that, you know, if you have an LDL goal of 100, that means you don't treat people whose LDL is less than 100, and that's about 40% of diabetics you would deny statin therapy. So there are just a whole bunch of reasons that we took a step back. Now, what is the right goal we have now since we put out our guidelines? So you make a guideline, and then everybody runs to their data set to prove you wrong, <laughs> right? And <No>. so, because <laughs> that's, that's the fun of academia. But it's been actually resoundingly supporting this new approach of really maximizing statin therapy. And I, I just saw an abstract here at the meeting today. Once you were on, high intensity statin, your LDL level didn't matter. So titration is being on the high intensity statin, not what LDL you achieve. So I think, you know, a lot of stuff to say that, and what's the right level, right? Because with these PCSK9 inhibitors, we presented another uh, uh, paper here today, or a poster here. Uh, we pooled all the Odyssey alurocumab studies to date. Uh, about five, over 5,000 people, about 800 have had consistently low LDLs, two or more consecutive LDLs less than 25. There doesn't seem to be any particular safety signals, uh, and actually there's a little signal of a little bit more cardiovascular event reduction. So we'll find out. You know, we've got big, multiple uh, ongoing cardiovascular outcomes trials with these PCSK9 inhibitors, which we need. Uh, to really establish how much event reduction is going to, you know, what's going to occur in a bigger population and also the long-term safety. Assuming no surprises, what role will PCSK9s play? Yeah, well, I think short-term both uh, the, you know, two companies have filed with the FDA for an LDL lowering indication, uh, which we expect before, you know, this summer even, uh, or this in this fall. So I think those are really going to be targeted on LDL lowering in high-risk groups, people with genetic hypercholesterolemia who definitely need more LDL lowering, uh, and then people who are statin intolerant, you know, high-risk people who can't take the maximum dose of statin who would benefit from some, from some more LDL lowering. The, the broader question is, should we be routinely adding PCSK9 inhibitors to statin therapy and everybody to reduce risk? I think we're going to have to wait for the cardiovascular outcomes trials. Well, the Odyssey results were published simultaneously in the New England Journal of Medicine, correct? Right. So they are already online. And for the rest of the uh, highlights from this particular meeting, please see the special supplement in CardioSource World News, where I am Executive Editor Rick McGuire.